Okay, so as promised in my community last night, here is today's LaunchBox setup guide. So in this setup guide, we're going to be using the latest version of LaunchBox, how to download it and where to download it. And I'm also going to be showing you how to link up a standalone emulator for this. So for this example, I'm going to be using a very cool Nintendo NES emulator. And we also got two versions of LaunchBox. So for this setup guide, I'm also going to be using the free version. But if you've got a collection of games you can make your game collection look really cool using launchbox so if you want to learn more about launchbox and how it works check this one out Okay then, so before we start today's setup guide for the latest version of LaunchBox for Windows, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like today's video. It really helps me out on my channel and it also gets you up to date retro emulation content as I upload it daily. So we're looking at the latest version of LaunchBox. So we got some new features in here and if you're new to LaunchBox, we're going to show you how to get you up and running with this. So. Link's going to be in my description as always, so we're going to go to the launchboxapp.com website and as we can see this is also available on Android. Now allegedly if you want to download this for Android it's not on the Google Play Store or anything else, you'll have to use your browser on your Android device to go to this website. So you can download it here. But as we know, I'm using Windows, so download the Windows version. So just pop in your email address. And once you've inputted that, just press on download. And then the next part of this is going to be heading over to your inbox and you should get a link. So LaunchBox are going to send you a link to download your copy of it. So once you get this in your inbox, it's just a simple case then of clicking on download here. So this is Nestopia and I'm going to be using a standalone emulator for this setup guide. So there's a couple of routes we can go down for setting up retro emulation through LaunchBox. You can either use RetroArch, but I'm going to make this as basic as possible. So on the Nestopia website, we're going to go to Nestopia version 1.40 binary. Just left click on that and that's going to bring you to SourceForge. So again, just like LaunchBox, this is a very trusted website and you shouldn't get any issues downloading from here. So we're going to open up Nestopia and set this up so it works well once we pair this with LaunchBox. So you're going to download a zip folder and what I'm going to do on my desktop is create a new folder and I'm just going to call this one Nes. If I drag in that Nestopia zip folder into that Nes folder, and I'm going to extract the contents from here. So right click on it, making sure it's highlighted. I'm using WinRAR to extract and extract here. And then once that's been extracted, we can now delete the .zip folder. And to open up Nestopia, just double left click on it. So we need to make sure this opens up in the full screen along with our game. So what we're going to do first is actually set up a controller for this. So we're going to go to Options, Input, and under Input, make sure under Type, Pad 1 is highlighted. And to actually map out your controller, what I'm going to do first is just go to Clear, because at the moment the mapping is set for your keyboard. So under Mapping, you can now correspond this for your controller. So double left click, left on my controller D-pad, up on my controller D-pad, right, down, select and once you've done that just go down to press OK and let's just check if this emulator is running so on my desktop I've got a game which is Super Mario Brothers 3 and that's a .NES file extension so I'm going to open this in Nestopia by going to file open and just double left click in on Super Mario Brothers 3 my controller is now working and whilst we're here if you go to options and just go down to preferences we can ask this emulator to start in full screen mode and that's what we want for launchbox once we launch a game through launchbox we want to go into a full screen mode so to do to do is go to switch to full screen on startup and make sure that one's checked and from here we can now 
Next up, we can play with some video settings for Nestopia. So under options, you can go to video. And under video, we have different settings here. So for example, if we go to mode, um, I can put this to 1920 by 1080. And under filter, you'll have a range of different filters here. So for example, if I change this to HQX, as you can see in the background, the image of the world's map is changed. It's not so pixelated. And if I change it to scale X, again, it's got a slight change. And also under palette, we can change this to RGB, which isn't the right colors for the game, but the option is there if you really want to. So just leave this to auto. And we also got some slides just there to play around with saturation, uh, contrast, that type of thing. But personally, I think everything here looks great in default. And to get the original look of a Nintendo NES game, as we can see, this looks very stretched at the moment. If we go to view, screen size, and make sure TV aspect is ticked. Okay, so I'm gonna just play this in full screen mode. So as we can see, all plus enter. Okay, so we've now got the emulator set up to open into full screen. We looked at some video settings and configured controller. So what we're gonna do is actually set up Launchbox to be paired with this. So Launchbox is gonna download just like I've got here. So this is a .exe and just double left click on it. And the first part of the installation process is selecting your language. I'm gonna obviously go for English and press okay. I accept the agreement. And next, now the next part is going to ask you where you want Launchbox to be installed. So I'm going to allow this to install into its default destination, which is in Jamie Launchbox. But you can change this to somewhere else if you like. For example, if I press on Browse, you can then select where you want this installation to go. So like I say, for now, I'm going to just leave this as default. I'm going to press Next. And we also got an option here to create a start menu folder. So again, that's optional. I'm gonna uncheck this, leave it unchecked and go to next. And then just simply press on install. And it's now initializing launch box. So just let this part populate what it's saying it's doing. Okay, so we're now in Launchbox 13.8 and we're using the free version as we can see. So next we're going to import our NES game or games if that's what we've got, as well as importing that emulator which we just set up. So to do this, we're gonna go over to Tools, Import, ROM Files, and this is gonna bring up the import wizard for ROMs. So from here we can press on next. Now my game is on my desktop, so I'm gonna quickly close out of here and I'm gonna actually put this game into a dedicated folder. So I'm gonna just right click, new folder, and I'm gonna call this NES Games. And just pop that in there. Now you can put that folder in wherever your Nestopia emulator is situated. But I like to keep things tidy. So we're going to go back to Launchbox, Tools, Import, ROM Files, Next. And now we can add folder. And if we go to Desktop or wherever your game's located, we're going to go into the NES folder and just highlight NES Games. And then select folder, Next. What platform are you importing games for? So you can either type in Nintendo NES or drop this down. I'm going to drop this down and just search for Nintendo NES or Nintendo Entertainment System. So just select this one and press next. And what we're going to do next is a lot of people choose this RetroArch with Launchbox. A lot of people find this a little bit tricky, especially if you're getting used to emulation. So I'm going to use a simplified route and that's why I'm using a very basic standalone Nestopia emulator. So I'm going to go to add. And as we can see, emulator name says Nestopia. We're going to go to browse where it says application path. Just left click, go to your desktop or wherever your emulator is. 
And of course, my Nestopia emulator is situated in my Nest folder. And we're going to double left click on the Nestopia.exe. And under default command line parameters, we don't need to put any commands into this because we've already set this to full screen in the emulator itself. So once you've done this, we're just going to go down to OK. And we're going to go to Next. Now, the next part of this is going to give you the option if you want your games to be moved to another directory. Personally, I'm going to go to use the files in their current location so they're not moved. Just select. And also make sure search for game information is also checked. Press next. Now, the next part of this is your artwork. So, providing you've got enough storage room, then by all means, check all. And that's going to download literally every piece of artwork available for a particular game or your game collection but it comes at a cost of size on your hard drive so personally i'm going to go to check none and i'm going to be very selective with this and just go and select box 3d box front and let's just go for box back we're going to go to next now configure any movies is optional if you left click on here it'll bring up user id and password if you go over to the Emu Movies website and sign up for free, if you're using something like Big Box, which is around £30, $30 to use, then something like Emu Movies is an absolute must so you can get those preview videos. And like I say, it's free. So once you register with Emu Movies, just pop in your user ID and password and press OK. So once you finish that, press Next. And we're going to press Next again. And now it's scanned my Super Mario Brothers free game, as we can see. And we're going to press finish. And right now it's looking for local metadata to gather the information for a launch box. And dependent on how many games you're importing into Launchbox, this can take a considerable amount of time. So as we can see, one game has been imported successfully, and here's our artwork for a game. Now, if you're not using Big Box, we can still make this look however you want it to look. So just a minute ago, I downloaded artwork for the back of this. If I go up to View, Image Group, I also downloaded a 3D box of this. And here we go, more of a 3D look. And the more games you've got, obviously this is going to look better. So let's actually play the game. If we press on play. Inchin, Nestopia. And my controller's working. So very simple stuff as you can see everything's now linked up now again if you need to configure anything for a given emulator you're using such as nestopia you don't do this through launchbox you'll have to go back to the emulator to do this so i'm going to give you an example if we go back to the nestopia emulator and change some settings nestopia.exe And this will open up in full screen mode because that's what we selected. So press Alt and Enter to bring it back into windowed mode. So we're going to look at video settings. If we just go to video under options, 
And for example, I select RGB because that's what we want to change when we launch up our games in Launchbox. Just press OK. And if we go back to Launchbox and launch the game again, we should have that RGB color scheme going. Really is that simple. So just remember, launch boxes for launching your games and anything to do with configurations, then that's in your standalone emulator or RetroArch if that's what you're going to be using to emulate your games using Launchbox. So that's it for today's Launchbox setup guide. If you like what you see today, like I said, hit notifications and subscribe. It really helps my channel a great deal. Plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it, which is every day. And also consider donating just to help my channel out. I put a lot of hours work into these videos. But anyways, until next time, stay retro.